So this is a video about these Hobby Power 30 amp speed controllers. I use these to make quadcopters and hexcopters and so on. Uh, they come as a kit, a uh, the speed controller, normally the A2212 brushless motor and normally come with a 10 inch propeller and all that for about £7 um, which is really cheap. But The key thing with these speed controllers is uh, you can actually do quite a bit more than you would believe with them. So the first thing I'm going to point out with these speed controllers is that uh, they're obviously a clone or very close to the uh, Hobby King Tonigi plus 30 amp speed controllers. And because of that you can actually use the same programming card. And as I'll just demonstrate. As you can see, you plug it in and it comes up with all the options. The only one that's not lit is this one down here. Didn't really understand what that one was. So just to demonstrate, I will uh, choose a setting on that one. So there you go, I've chose that. It's still flashing, so you then press OK and it will write that to the uh, speed controller. So that's the now, that has now got new settings. So I'll now change the uh, programmer to a, a servo tester and we'll see what it does. So I'll just have to recycle the power to get this to bring in the new settings. So there you go, it plays a tune. Why you'd want it to play a tune, I don't know, but that's what it does. Thankfully when you give it some uh, pulse, it does shut up. So that's the first thing, you can program these with the Turnigy programming card. So the next thing I'm going to show you is how to uh, hack these speed controllers and put Simon K firmware on that. So the first thing you're going to have to do is remove the heat shrink on the outside and then we're going to have to program it. I've already cut the heat shrink so it's just a matter of taking it off. And there you can see there's not a lot to that. Um, but that chip in the middle is the key thing. So to program this chip you're going to need what's called a USB ASP um, and that's a in-circuit serial programmer and this is the one I've got. Now you can pick these up off um, eBay and they uh, don't cost very much. What I have done though is at the other end of this is one of these and I'll just get the camera to focus. So hopefully you can see these. There are six little pins which when you press this uh, on top of the chip align with the six legs that you need to program the chip. Now what's important that this red dot here aligns with the dot on the chip. And in my case and here you can see I've painted the dot white, so it's a bit more clearer for you to see. Okay, so I'm now going to go through the process of flashing this, and uh, this is going to take some time because it is going to fail, and hopefully I will be able to show you how to get this to work. But just to prove it's going to fail, firstly what we need to do is open the flash tool, now this uh, does take a few seconds to load up, um, it's actually getting the latest data from the website, but it does load up. And then what we want to do is choose any USB ASP clone on the top, port USB board rate 19200, user defaults. And then we want, choose your controller, and we want the 80 Mega 8 based brush, brushless ESC. 8 kilobytes flash. Um, now what is important is we change it to TGY. Um, I'll explain that in the text but it's very important you get to TGY. That is the important part. Um, once we've got that selected it'll uh, give you the most recent version which is this one and then we need to push this down Hold it still and then press the running man. 
an error during writing flash and it's all red writing so why has that failed for a start let's let go of that um, well that's very easy and if I quickly show you if we go to this PC and go properties this is the reason it's failed it's called Windows 10 go to device manager and you'll see you have a caution on the USB ASP that is because Windows has decided to uh, replace the driver with one that does not work so our first problem is how to get the correct driver loaded now thankfully I have the drivers that I need but this leads to the second problem so if I double click this and then go to driver update driver browse my computer and it's actually on my desktop and then go next installing drivers it says ha here we go windows found drivers for your device but encountered an error while attempting to install them thanks windows so turns out that this driver windows will not let you use it because the third party inf does not contain digital signature signature information so that's the second thing we now have to sort out how to get the driver loaded and accepted by Windows so this is where I'm going to lose my screen recorder okay so the next stage of this is to shut down Windows so you can actually go Windows key and R that will bring up the uh, run command and in there you write shutdown space slash whatever that is backslash R backslash O um, I'll cut and paste that to the text below uh, once you run that it will shut down you're about to be signed out yes I know that's because you wouldn't load the driver restarting and what you will see is that will restart and give you a few options so we want to troubleshoot advanced options startup settings and then what that will do is basically when we restart it will disable driver signature enforcement and here we get the option and it's option 7 let's go to this computer device manager The USB ASP device is still plugged into the USB port, so I've still got this error. Double click that, go to the driver, and I want to update the driver. And again, I've got it there, so if I go next, this time it should actually install it. Install this driver software anyway. Ah, there we go right so now we've got that back close that down okay so we seem to be getting somewhere um, initially it didn't work because the driver for the uh, USB ASP wasn't working when we tried to update the driver Windows wouldn't let us so we then had to disable the signatures uh, to allow the driver to be loaded now the drivers loaded the computer crashed uh, rebooted it the mouse wouldn't work finally had to big button it and it's now up and running again so we have selected TGY and that's the latest version so let's go for it Okay, so that said there was an error, that's a shame. 
try that again. Writing, reading, okay. So the only thing I haven't done is connect to battery and I'm just going to try that. So one last try. So there we go. So after all of that, when you come to flash it, you must connect a battery and do all the other stuff I've shown. So now we have Simon K firmware loaded in the speed controller. Right, so now we've successfully flashed the KK firmware. I've uh, put a little label on the speed controller and I've put heat shrink back over it. But that comes to the next problem. What if you need to make a change to the firmware? Um, you don't really want to be using this tool again because you're going to have to cut the heat shrink off again. Um, so that's where I've got another little tool and that is this little device. It's a USB programmer from Afro. And what's uh, really helpful about this little device is it actually programs the uh, speed controller using the uh, receiver wire. Um, specifically it uses the black and the white wire. You mustn't have the red Beck wire connected otherwise it will not work. So you can see here I've uh, used a servo extension cable and I've cut a section of red wire out of both ends just so I know. So we open the KK flash tool again and uh, this time instead of it being any USB ASP clone we're going to use Afro USB programming tool. So we select that and where we've got port and it's currently USB we need to change that to COM8. Now if it doesn't say COM8 you're going to need to plug in this device and then pick it up. But mine's already picked it up so that's correct. We've uh, made sure we've got TGY selected and instead of it being the normal one we're going to go for reverse, that just means reverse rotation. Uh, so you then connect the receiver wire up, make sure you connect the battery and hit the running man. And you can see it's uh, working straight away. Uh, Windows doesn't need any updates or signatures disabling, it seems to pick it up straight away. So the last thing I'm going to show you is uh, how to make other adjustments to the firmware. When I first flashed these uh, Hobby Power speed controllers I discovered that the uh, KK firmware in its standard form um, was a bit aggressive for these speed controllers and the motors. In fact the motor got so hot you couldn't touch it. And uh, that was because uh, the timing on the motor was too aggressive. So the last thing I'm going to show you is how to adjust that. Um, on the Simon K, sorry, on the KK firmware, you go to Simon K firmware compiler, and you make sure it's master, and click download. I've obviously already done this, and once it's downloaded, you must then change Afro because it defaults to the alphabetical order, right down the bottom to GGY, and then on this TGY.ASM master sheet you can then change certain things including the motor advance, um, you can put a brake on, you can uh, change the reverse rotation and you can also have a forward reverse like a uh, car would have. So there's various things you can do there. And the way you do that is for example if you wanted to change that uh, just put it to say 15. Um, now a little glitch with this you have to then drag the screen down a little bit and you've got save, compile, save and compile. So if we do that, we can now flash that firmware with that new timing onto our speed controller.
and there you have it. So that's all I'm going to show you. I hope this has been useful to some people. I think it showed nearly every single pitfall you can have flashing these simple controllers. And uh, if you enjoyed this, please subscribe. Thank you.